What's up, people? Welcome to the War Zone once again. We back, uh, and we're going to do some brief breakdowns and predictions on the UFC 264. So, um, wow, I'm excited about this card, man. Um, There's a lot of uh, competitive fights on here. I see a couple of gimme fights, but uh, for the most part, they did an excellent job matching up on this card. Um, Excuse me. So we're going to start from the prelims and we're going to work our way up to the main event. So in the first event, we have a middleweight match between who Yazong against Alan Amadovsky. So. Um, OK, so neither of these fighters are much. To be spoken of, um, definitely not high level fighters. Yazong is coming off a two-year layoff, and Amadowski as well. I think he's been off for about a year and a half. Um, so I, I really don't know what to expect from each one of these fighters, but um, uh, Yazong is the taller fighter, younger fighter. Um, he's 26 years old. If I make no mistake, um, Yaz is a light heavyweight, and he's cutting weight coming down. Um, to the middleweight division. Um, he's bigger and he's stronger. So uh, what I'm going to do, man, I'm gonna actually going to go with Young Yadong um, because of his size and his youth. Nothing more. All right. So our next matchup um, is in the flyweight division. We have... Jerome Rivera against Zalgas Zumagulov. Uh, first off, um, it's a huge height and re reach advantage for Rivera. Um, however, um, I really don't believe Rivera belongs in the UFC, man. I mean, he's taken some brutal losses, man, and taken some serious damage. Um... I would have to say that Zumagulov um, has fought the better competition. He has better grappling. Um, I believe if he takes Rivera down, wears him down, uh, he can pull out a decision with this fight. Um, with the way uh, Rivera's been losing, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets stopped at some point in this fight. Um, so... I'm going to go with Dumagulov by decision. So next up, we have Omari Akhmedov against Brad Tavares. Okay, so this is a tough fight to call. Um, Tavares has definitely fought the higher level of competition. Definitely the more well-rounded fighter. However... Akhmadov is an exceptional grappler, um, very strong. Um, the question is, can he keep Tavares on the mat if he takes him down? And will he do enough um, to win this match? Um, I just think Tavares is a much better on the feet. Um, it's still a toss-up, but... I'm going to go with um, Akhmedov, man, by, by uh, a squeaker. I just think that Tavares um, will not be able to hurt this guy to the point um, that uh, he won't go after him, man. And I believe that he will wear Tavares down by taking him down and him struggling to get back up or... Um, you know, and later rounds, man, I mean, the worst thing for Tavares is to be taken down, man. But I think this guy can, uh, uh, really, uh, take advantage of his grappling. So there you have it. I got Akhmedov by decision. All right. So next up in the women's flyweight division, we got Jennifer Maya against Jessica I. Um, both fighters have decent striking. Jessica I um, 
has good hands. Um, she knows how to throw the hands. However, I believe Maya has the superior ground game in this one, especially after the Shinko fight. Um, ground game will definitely be the difference, and I'm going to take Maya by decision. So, next up in the featherweight division, we have Ryan Hall against Ilya Duporia. Well, wow, wow. This could be the fight of the night. Um, Ryan Hall is a very good and dangerous fighter. Great jujitsu. I mean, excellent jujitsu. Um, Duporia is a high level wrestler. Greco-Roman wrestler, very strong. Um, I think it's a bad matchup for Ryan Hall. I really do. You know how they say styles make fight? Um, I don't think Ryan Hall's jiu-jitsu is going to be enough. Um, I think Tupori is too seasoned for that, and we could probably see a late-round finish. So. Um, yeah, I think um, in the later rounds, I think Tuporia catches him, man, and puts him away. Um, this guy is just, uh, I think he's too much for Ryan Hall. So I'm going to go with Tuporia, uh, third round KO. So next up, we have the middleweight division. We have Trevin Giles against Driscus Duplessis. Um, Duplessis has very good striking, and I love his guy's stand up. Um, Giles is a very good grappler, and I think in this fight, he's gonna be looking to take this to the ground. Um, Duplessis has significant power in his hands, and he will put you out. Um, can he keep this fight on the feet? If so, I truly believe we will see a second round finish by Duplessis. Um, I do see Giles being competitive early, um, but I just think um, Duplessis is um, too much for him. Uh, I think once Trevin feels his power that he's going to sort of back off and I believe Duplessis is just going to walk him down and put him away. So I'm calling the second round KO for Duplessis. Real quick, um, there was a bout scheduled between Sean Brady and Kevin Lee. Um, Kevin Lee pulled out of that fight due to injury, and um, they offered Sean Brady to uh, to give him a replacement, but he refused. He says um, he'd just rather wait till August and remake this fight. So our next fight up in the welterweight division is between Nico Price and Mikel Herrera. Wow, guys, this here. Wow, this is going to be an interesting fight. Two dangerous strikers. Um, exciting matchup. Um, I'll definitely have my popcorn for this one. Um, if you've watched Mikael Pereira fight, you know how entertaining and unpredictable he is. Uh, very unorthodox, and you never know what this guy's going to do. Um, spinning back fits, jumping off the cage. Flying knees, um, you know, this guy can do it all, and he's he's really really dangerous. Um, great Thai boxing style. Um, Nico's definitely an up and down fighter. He's had his moments, um, but I think he, this fight also, I, I I have to say, I think it is winnable for Nico Price. Um, I just don't see him being creative enough. Um, and yeah, I just think Michael Pereira is just too much for him. Um, and this fight right here, man, is a pivotal fight for both of these guys, I believe. So I'm going to take 
um, Michael Pereira by late second round finish. All right. All right. Next up in the welterweight division, we have Carlos, the natural born killer condit against Max Griffin. Wow. Um, Carlos Condit, everybody knows he has great Mai Tai, um, very technical fighter. Um, Griffin has an awkward style, um, great movement. I love his movement in the, in the cage. Um, I look for Griffin to take this fight seriously. Um, and for some reason, I just see him doing enough in this fight to pull off a, a uh, close decision. Um, I think speed and clinching will definitely be the difference, but I'm not going to sleep on Carlos Condit. Uh, you know what? Um, wow, he, 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 he's been around the block for a while, but this guy comes in here. I just don't know which, which one's going to show up, but if he comes in here and he fights a very technical and intelligent fight, he can definitely win this fight, but I'm just going to have to go with Max Griffin in this one. Um, by decision. All right. So this next fight is in the bantamweight division. We got um, Sean O'Malley against Louis Smoker. Totally. Totally, totally a mismatch. I don't know why this fight's happening. Um, this fight makes absolutely no sense at all to me. Um, tomato can alley. Sean needs to fight much better competition than this. Um, Sean O'Malley by KO second round. You know, I think the UFC is um, being real careful about how this career is being um, groomed and built. However, um, this can work against a fighter later on in his career, man. Um, I just don't think that this, they put much thought into this match. I think they just threw somebody in there just to keep, the, keep him active. But uh, like I said, man, I, I just think he's, he's so much better and he needs better competition. So, John O'Malley, we're going to go with a, um, shoot. I'm going to say late first, early second round KO. All right. Next up, women's bantamweight division. We've got Irene Aldana against Yana Kunitskaya. Um, Aldana has great hands, love her stand up. Um, Kunitskaya is more of a Muay Thai fighter. Um, it's gonna be a tough fight. Um, Aldana can scrap with the best of them. Uh, and I just don't see Kunitskaya on her level. Um, um, Kunik Sky will try to clinch, but I think Aldana is skilled enough to stay uh, on her feet. Um, I'm going to have to go with the height, the reach, and the better striking. So um, I'm going to go with um, Irene Aldana in this one, man. And, and I'm going to give it to her by decision. All right, so next we have up in the heavyweight division, we got a battle of the big boys. Kai Tuavasa against Greg Hardy. So, um, tough fight. Uh, both of these guys can bang. Um, Harvey is a taller fighter. Um, he has power. Um, 
I wish he had a better gas tank. Um, he did uh, go the distance against Alexander Volkov. Um, uh, I think uh, Tai Tuovasa, once again, power in his hands. Um, he can get you out of there. Um, but I think his only chance is to grapple in this one. Um, too risky, man. Too risky of a fight. Uh, I think um, Greg Hardy's feeling himself, man, in this one. Uh, may see a stoppage in round two, man, in favor of Greg Hardy. Um, it's a good fight, like I said, but um, I'm going to go with Greg Hardy via TKO uh, round two. Okay, okay. Now, this is the fight that I really can't wait to see. The welterweight division. We've got Gilbert Burns against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Oh, wow. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Um, we got Karate Fighter um, versus Power. Uh, Burns, um, I think in this one, he has to get his uh, ground game going. Um, again, tough fight. Um, I, I just don't see Gilbert Burns losing this fight, man. Um, especially after being at the level that he was, unfortunately, you know, he lost some fights, uh, Kamara Usman fight. Um, I just think he's more dangerous at this point and, um, more likely to meet up with Usman than Steven Thompson. Um, I feel like if Wonderboy stays on his feet, um, I can see him making this fight really difficult um, for Burns. I, I don't think Burns wants to fight him on the feet. Uh, I think Burns will um, rush him, put him against the cage, and try to take him down and uh, throw some power shots. Um, but... Um, I got Gilbert pulling this one out, man, in a, in a decision. I just don't see how. I think there's a difference here, man. And I, I'm going to just have to go with Burns. Okay. Okay, people. It's the main event of the evening in the lightweight division. This is the trilogy match between... Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor. Um, the trilogy, man. So uh, this is one of those fights um, that will um, determine Conor's real relevance in the UFC, man, um, from this point on. We all know um, this would be a complete stand-up bout. I don't expect this bout to go to the ground anywhere. Um, Clearly, Connor is the more deceptive fighter. Um, he has power. Um, I just can't see him um, more successful on the feet than Poirier. Um, I think uh, Poirier knows how to pick his shots. And um, I don't know. It's just something about Connor's gas tank, man. It's been suspect, man, um, during the later, later rounds, man. Um, I've noticed in the fights that he that he has lost that um he gets to this point man where he just he slows down drastically man and um and he, if he gets hit with a few shots or he gets put in a compromising position man he seems to just give it up so um i gotta ride with poirier again man being victorious in this one um he's smarter and more mature um, I don't see him getting in any serious trouble. Um, I think leg kicks are going to be key for him and maybe the difference in this one. But uh, overall, I got Poirier by unanimous decision. Once again, people, man, thank you for checking out the channel, man. Please um, check out my Instagram page at war.zone737 um you can check out my reddit page at u slash 
Warzone 737. And um, yeah, I appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel, help support the channel, man. Um, it'll be much love, man. And that's all I have for you. And with that, I'm out. Peace.